Well, we're helping you with your Easter homework, and I'm joined by Logan Gates of Ravi Zacharias Ministries, and we've got a big question this Easter. Dead man walking. What does it mean? Logan, tell us what's at the core of Easter. At the dead heart, man walking. Yeah, at the heart of Easter is, is the story of a dead man walking, and I, I'm here to talk about why I think that what we find with Easter are so many things that need to be explained, things that yeah. we would need a resurrection to find an explanation for. Okay, let's unpack that because it is a big story and we tend to rush over it. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's just concentrate on dead man walking. What happened to Jesus that began the entire Easter story? I think it would have to be him rising from the dead. That's what I would say it had to be, that you had his followers right off the bat having an eyewitness experience with a risen, bodily, resurrected Jesus. Okay, so how come you are so convinced he actually did rise from the dead? I think the starting point has to be thinking about the eyewitness testimony. Any journalist investigating a story is going to want to hear from the people who were there. And what we find from um, records that are both in the Bible but also outside the Bible are you had his followers in groups small and large in very physical ways. They're touching Jesus, they're eating with him, having experiences with him as a risen person after his death, experiences that had such an impact on them. I always call yeah. Luke where these stories are um, gathered in, their, 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 in all the Gospels, but in Luke I call him the patron saint of journalists because he's mm. carefully investigating. How solid are these eyewitness accounts, these records? Would they be as trustworthy as what someone would find, let's say, when they're going to open 9-11 50 years from now? And they're going to say, oh yeah, look at all those eyewitness accounts. How trustworthy are the Jesus accounts of his resurrection? I'd say extremely trustworthy, especially for the time period. We're speaking here in the field of ancient history. And what we find is that even within maybe three to five years, in the creed that Paul quotes in 1 Corinthians 15, we have eyewitness testimony included. The earliest sources we have about Christianity speak about this resurrection. And what we find, I think, that makes historians think this is really credible stuff is you see the conversion of people very skeptical from these encounters. You see Paul, an enemy of the church, someone persecuting Christians, having an experience with a risen physical Jesus. You see James, the brother of Jesus, having a similar experience of encountering Jesus that moved him away from his skepticism before. I think that these are apparently encounters that had such an impact on people that they weren't just now moving to Christianity, but they were boldly in the streets and public places willing to die, and not just die for Christianity or moral teachings, but for the specific claim of the resurrection. Because what we've lost track of is the, res the rising of Jesus' body from death, dead man walking, really gives us all the incredible truth that the end of our lives is not the end of our lives. There's another whole resurrection for all of us coming. Explain that, how that begins to shape then. It, it, it's shaped our world. That's right. I think it's, it's the only thing that goes against what we might call entropy, the whole thing that the whole world is progressing towards decay, and that's just what happens with everything over time. With the resurrection, we find something swimming upstream. And for Christians from the very beginning, it was, on the one hand, the seal of Jesus' identity, that he was who he claimed to be. He died and he rose. But then also, for Christians, it's, it's the forerunner to all of us who've placed our trust in Christ. We can know, because he rose, Jesus says, because I live, you also will live. And that hope beyond the grave, we take that for granted. We're so familiar with it in the West. That idea is a Christian idea, and it comes from the real physical resurrection of Jesus. But that Easter truth has to be engaged personally. How do we do that? I think we need to ask the question, why did Jesus die? We celebrate Easter right on the heel of Good Friday. We need to think, what was this all about? I, this idea of new life, that's a nice idea. But I think we need to see first that, that we needed Jesus to lay down his life for us. That, that, you know, the Christian message in a sense is offensive. It says you're so sinful. The Son of God had to die for you. But you're so loved that he was glad to do it. But in God raising Jesus from the dead, it's like the bill of all our sins and debt is stamped, that says now, paid in full. And as a Christian, when you see yourself not just from the outside looking at this pretty story, but in from the inside, this is a story about me, about you. Now that's something that has the power to change your life, to give you hope for whatever situation you face. If you can face death, what more? Um, what more? Because we have this long r record of God working with the human race, and it's broken. 
it needs the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm. How does that sacrifice of Jesus then shape who I am today? I think what it primarily does is it, it gives us a new identity. It gives us an identity as actually the intimacy that Jesus had with God. Jesus was the only one who started talking about God as a father. He used very intimate language to speak about him. To be a Christian means to see that just as Jesus took our place on the cross, so also in Jesus rising, we take his place in the sense of the intimacy that he experienced with God. That God can be more than just an idea or a person who's far off, but he's a person who we will see face to face and that he is a God who not, doesn't just want to give us an eternal life, but wants to give us life now. And we actually have Sundays because of that. Like history, just tell us briefly the history lesson on why we don't, why, why Sunday has always been now this day set apart to well, celebrate. This is one thing historians puzzle over for the Jews and for Jewish people today. It's Saturday, that's the Sabbath. Yeah. Here on Sunday, at a very early date, Christians start taking their day of worship. What explains that? And from the very beginning, the Christians saw that the resurrection of Jesus was beginning something new, yeah. that the Christian life is meant to be one of, of, of new life, of new purpose, and of living for God with hope. And I think that we all need hope, and it's in our most challenging times, dark times, that I think the resurrection starts to glow in a way that I think breaks through some of the familiarity we can have with Easter or, or you know, church meeting on a Sunday. It was life-giving for these disciples. Yeah. It can be life-giving for us. And it has changed the whole course of how people have lived their lives for centuries. Logan Gates from Ravi Zacharias Ministries, thank you so much. Happy Easter. <laughs> Thank you. Th thank you for teaching us again. And um, just really want to want to remind you that if you are still discovering Easter, if you're still trying to figure out what is going on, it is meant to be a time for you to personally connect with this risen Christ that we will celebrate. The sacrifice of his life on Friday to enter us all into a new relationship with Jesus. Call our prayer lines. We will answer each and every question and can pray for you to have a new Easter beginning with a personal salvation with Jesus. More after this.